Hey, what's up? In my opinion, there's no reason why we can't make a great pizza on a weeknight. The only thing that stands in our way most of the time is just a total lack of pre-planning. And luckily this recipe requires none of that. So today I'm gonna show you a process for a really fun, very tasty pizza that I'm really excited about. And it goes from the mixing bowl to the oven in just about an hour. To get started, I'm gonna grab a little saucepan like this one and into it, I'm gonna measure 210 grams of beer. I prefer beers that come in green bottles like this one, but any beer that you would drink while watching a sports game is also gonna work. This beer is icy cold as you can see, and that's not gonna be great for fermenting bread. So we're gonna heat this over low heat over at the stove for roughly 20 to 30 seconds or just until the temperature reads in the ballpark of about 98 degrees Fahrenheit or 36 C. Heat off, now I'll grab my favorite tool for making dough quickly, that's the food processor and into the bowl all of that goes 350 grams of strong all-purpose flour, five grams of salt, eight grams of sugar, seven grams of yeast. That's about double what I would normally use, but we only have an hour here and 15 grams of olive oil. The lid goes on and now I'm gonna spin this up on high speed for about 20 to 30 seconds or until everything is well combined. Then while this thing is still spinning, I'm gonna stream in this warm beer slowly. After 10 to 15 seconds of spinning, that beer is gonna hydrate the flour and form a nice shaggy little dough ball like this. Like I said, the food processor is a really great tool for mixing doughs quickly. So so long as the dough is below 65% hydration, like this one is. To finish developing the gluten in this dough, I'm gonna flour my cutting board real quick, flip out the dough, and then give this dough about one minute's worth of simple kneading back and forth like this. Now is a good time to mention that the beer in this dough is there to stand in for all the yeasty flavors that we would usually get from long, slow fermentation with yeast. I saw this move in a Cook's Illustrated magazine years ago for rolls or something like that, and it stuck with me as a clever shortcut to yeastiness ever since. After about a minute of kneading this back and forth, this dough looks really well developed and is plenty strong to make into a really nice weeknight pizza. And if you don't have a food processor, the classic medium bowl and sturdy spoon method that I've shown in a lot of these videos will definitely pull through for you and give you a really well mixed dough. But since this is a low hydration pizza dough, it's really unlikely that you'll be able to get things stirred past this sandy dry point in the bowl. So as you can see here, I flipped it out onto the cutting board to finish getting this combined with my hands and then finally kneaded it for about three minutes to get to this point where it's a nice stubby little hand mixed dough ready to be divided. For that, I've got my digital scale here, of course, and I'm going to cut these into two equal sized pieces that are roughly 300 grams a piece. From there, I'm going to shape this dough into two matching round balls real quick. And don't worry about getting rolled up into super tight, pretty pieces. This recipe is very forgiving and will definitely let us play it loose. And once these are rolled up, that looks like pizza dough. Now we're going to cover them with a tea towel and let them rest up on the counter here for 15 minutes. After that 15 minutes, this dough is fully relaxed and maybe a little bit dry looking. That tea towel probably should have been damp, but it doesn't matter as you're going to see in a second. We're headed right into the shape the balls into pizza part. And to do that, I need a large square of parchment paper. I'm going to oil that, spread that oil edge to edge, add a dough ball into the middle, and then add a second piece of parchment paper onto the counter here. Hit that with some oil, spread it around, and then finally flip that oiled parchment onto the dough. Using my hands, I'm going to smash this dough down into a roughly six to eight inch flat round disc like this. Then I'm going to grab my rolling pin and use gentle pressure to roll this into a roughly 12 to 14 inch flat round crust for pizza. After a few seconds, you'll see that this gets turned into an oblong shape pretty fast, and that's totally fine. We're gonna rotate the parchment 90 degrees and continue to do our thing with the rolling pin until we have something that is evenly spread out, kind of flat and kind of round. If you're not loving the shape that you've got in front of you, you can rotate this 15 to 30 degrees at a time instead of 90 degrees. Roll it out the best you can. It should come pretty quickly. If you haven't rolled out pizza with parchment before, I totally get it. But like everything in this recipe, it's super forgiving and whatever you end up with is gonna work just fine. And after about 90 seconds of rolling this out, take a look. We've got a nice coating of olive oil all the way across the dough. It looks flat and even, and I'm feeling really happy with this one. So I'm going to set it aside and then roll out the second pizza ball. The parchment combined with the rolling pin here is an attempt to make this pizza faster and more simple for anyone with any skill level to make these. Because as you might've noticed, I do a hand stretch pizza in a lot of these videos, and that's because it usually leads to great results, but it is in no way the only path to make a great pizza. Once both of these dough balls are rolled out, we're going to let them rise here on the counter for 30 to 40 minutes while the oven gets hot. For that, I'm going to be preheating it to 550 degrees Fahrenheit or 287C. And to set up the inside of this oven, I've got one rack about a third of the way up in the box. That's not right. And of course, next goes in my pizza steel. I love it. I love it. I love it. While the oven preheats, let's make some pizza sauce real quick. 
into a high sided container, I'm gonna measure one whole 28 ounce can of nice crushed tomatoes like these. Behind that goes 100 grams of tomato paste, 12 grams of salt, 20 grams of sugar, two grams of dried basil, two grams of dried oregano, one gram of chili flake, two grams of garlic powder, and two grams of onion powder. Now I'm gonna grab my immersion blender real quick and give this a spin to break everything down. If you're thinking that this looks like a lot of pizza sauce, it is, this is a double batch, but I figure if I've got a can of nice tomatoes open here, I'm not gonna just put half of it in the fridge where it's gonna sit there for two weeks and remind me that I'm wasteful. Instead, I'll freeze the other half for next week's Wednesday night pizza party. Once things are spun up to be smooth, but not too smooth, we can take a look. It's thick, it has some texture, and yes, this is going to be quite flavorful. Now, the last little prep item before we make this pizza is the cheese, and for that, I've got two of my all-time favorite pizza cheeses. The first one is a full-fat aged mozzarella cheese that I got from the deli counter at the grocery store, and yes, that tastes very good. The other cheese I got here is a fresh whole milk mozzarella cheese that's a little slippy, but yeah, this one looks good. Let's get a bite of that. Oh. Okay, to get these ready for pizza, I'm gonna grate the aged mozzarella on my box grater on the largest hold sides to get a nice, large grated cheese like this. I'd say you need about 200 to 250 grams per pizza if you wanna be properly cheesing. For the fresh mozzarella, I'm gonna cube that up into a half inch size pieces real quick, or you could just tear this right onto the pizza if you didn't wanna do the added prep here. That's totally up to you. And of course, feel free to change it up cheese-wise here. Any cheese blend is gonna work on this pizza, except for maybe a buffalo milk mozzarella that's designed for a hot oven for a Neapolitan and pizza, the moisture there is not gonna have enough time to cook off properly and we're gonna have pizza soup, not good. It's been about 30 minutes now since we rolled out these pizza crusts or about 45 minutes in total since we started this process and now it's time to build these pizzas. This crust has risen just enough to have a little bit of gassiness to it. That's gonna translate into a nice, light, crispy pizza with great texture in just a second. First thing down on this pizza, of course, is gonna be that uncooked crushed tomato sauce. I'm going for about three to four tablespoons here all day and for this style, I like to push this sauce all the way out to the edge of this crust because I'm not looking for a bready thick crust pizza on a Wednesday night. This is a lighter, more sessionable style. Up next is the cheese and the shred's gonna go down first. Again, this is about 200, maybe 250 grams, depending on how cheesy you like it. And then comes the fresh mozzarella cubes. And I'm just laying those down to taste, maybe a dozen or so of those spread from edge to edge. And lastly comes peps. These are the simple store-bought boar's head brand that I used in the delivery style pizza video, and I really like them. They've got more acidity, more heat, and overall just more flavor than generic pepperoni. Once this is all pepped up, we're gonna load it into a preheated oven and bake it for six to seven minutes, depending on just how high your oven actually gets. And I guess this is a good time to mention that I like to bake my pizzas really dark. Some people out there on the internet think that they're burnt and they go way out of their way to tell me that, but I respect all kinds of pizzas out there, even if they're undermelted and pale and kind of gross looking, you do what whatever you wanna do, but here on this channel, I bake it dark. After six to seven minutes in the oven, this pizza looks very, very good in my opinion. The cheese is melty, the ronies are curled and just starting to sweat. And since there was a bunch of oil on that parchment paper, the dough kind of fried underneath and the crust is really well baked and quite crisp. But that's just one pizza. The next pizza, of course, is gonna get a bunch of pepper and chinis on top, which I think is the best pizza topping of all time, especially when paired with pepperonis, throw on some pecorino or some Parmesan, bake it for six to seven minutes and there we go. You guys, for one hour of work, the texture and flavor of this pizza is unmatched in my opinion. Consider this a valuable new tool in your belt, not just for a weeknight, but in general when you want pizza. It's yeasty and crisp and it just has the perfect balance of toppings and cheese and everyone deserves to have a pizza party on demand. Even if it's five o'clock and you're really hungry, six o'clock isn't that far away and this pizza's gonna meet you there. Let's eat this thing. Before I get out of here, a huge thank you to everybody who supports this channel on Kofi. And if you're subscribed, thanks a lot. If you're not, what are you doing? Please hit subscribe. As always, guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around to the end. We'll see you next time.